Imagine that you're leaving Earth. You're quickly gliding past our moon, traveling approximately 360,000 kilometers. This typically takes about three days with our current technology, another six months, and you'll reach our beautiful, almost twin planet, Mars. This is assuming that we're aligned. If you're unlucky, you might only be two thirds of the way there, making the total journey time nine months from the time you set off. Well, that's assuming that you take the normal fuel efficient route, the circular, windy one that loops around almost everything in our solar system, the one that space scientists like myself love. But to be honest, if we had enough fuel, we could do it in two. Here, you'll find the highest mountain, highest volcano in the solar system. And yes, it's probably still active. The next part is tricky. You'll need to be sharp on your navigation skills to maneuver through the asteroid belt and dodge those pesky space boulders. Although the total mass of the asteroid belt is just 3% of the mass of the moon, even the small ones could do some serious damage. Just kidding, the average separation of asteroids in the asteroid belt is almost a million kilometers. That's about 2.5 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. So the likelihood that we'll crash into anything is almost zero. But not zero! Don't forget, you have over a million asteroids here that are larger than a kilometer in size. If you succeed, and let's be honest, you're pretty likely to succeed unless you're a moron, and then you emerge on the other side a year and a half later, well, we're still nowhere near our destination. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and today we're talking about the edge of our solar system. But where exactly is it? To find out, we should probably just keep going. Jupiter, home to the biggest storm in our solar system. Just under two years to get here. I spoke about ESA's JUICE mission not so long ago. Jupiter and its 95 moons confirmed so far will be its final destination, but it's taking the roundabout route and it has to get into orbit, so it's gonna take eight years. Another three years later and over a billion kilometers traveled, we will get to enjoy the beautiful views of Saturn's pretty rings. Although enjoy them whilst you can, they're gradually disappearing on us. It's no surprise with Uranus being three times as far away at three billion kilometers, it's going to take nine years to reach this icy planet. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a very long time. No wonder we've never sent any spacecraft there. Our last planet, Neptune, is about 4.5 billion kilometers away. That's 30 times the distance between Earth and Sun. It's the coldest planet in our solar system with an average surface temperature of minus 229 degrees Celsius. So why anyone would want to come here, I cannot relate. Despite being named after the Roman god of the sea and its mesmerizing blue color, this planet is not made of water. It's mostly methane, or commonly known as cow fart. And no, Pluto is not a planet. Yeah, I know, I want it to be too, but I don't make the rules, stupid International Astronomical Union and their prejudices. Yes, I said it, Jupiter's not a planet either under your stupid classifications. No, Pluto belongs with the Kuiper Belt. Just like the asteroid belt, it's a ring of natural space junk, but much, much larger and much more massive. Mostly icy things like comets but also failures like Pluto and Makemake who clearly want to be planets, but they're just not good enough for the IAU. And yes, the Kuiper Belt is big. It's about 3 billion kilometers across. You'd have traveled 7.5 billion kilometers just to get out of the other side. With the New Horizons spacecraft, which visited Pluto in 2015, traveling at a speed of 36,000 miles per hour, it would take 200 years to get here. So you'd be dead. But thankfully our technology has advanced since then and something like NASA's Parker Solar Probe today could probably floor it and get there in 10. Yes, that is still years by the way. And before you ask, no, the Voyager spacecraft didn't pass through the Kuiper Belt, not interesting enough apparently. Instead, they took a detour and headed straight to the Oort Cloud. Now, nah, that's a mean thing to say. The Kuiper Belt space rubble could one day end up as a new planet. So I know for one, I would be super interested to see it on our solar system tour. Anyway, back to the Oort Cloud, this feature of the solar system, although rich in comets, is very distinct from the Kuiper Belt, as it's a huge spherical shell engulfing our entire star system. 
It doesn't start until 2000 AU, so 2000 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Voyagers 1 and 2 spacecraft are currently somewhere going in this direction towards the great beyond. Despite both spacecraft having launched way back in 1977, yes, much older than me, 46 years later, and they are nowhere near the start of the Oort cloud. And at its current speeds, they won't reach it for another 300 years or so. So how big exactly is the Oort cloud? Well, to be honest, no one actually knows. Some estimates are 50,000 AU, so 50,000 times the Earth's in distance, to as far as 200,000 AU. This is probably a bit of an exaggeration though, if you think our next nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is 270,000 AU away. I guess the best way we can find out is by actually going there. But in the best case scenario, it will take the voyagers maybe another 30,000 years to get there. Unfortunately for us, not just for the time to get there, but Voyager 1 spacecraft is expected to run out of power in about 2025, and Voyager 2 spacecraft is expected to run out of power by 2030. So even though they may keep traveling indefinitely to the edge of our solar system and beyond into the depths of the universe, they won't be able to tell us about it without their power and hence their communication systems working. Sometimes you'll hear that the voyagers have already left the solar system, that they're in interstellar space, but that is a lie. It's only true if you're one of those planetary scientists that believe that the edge of the solar system is defined by the heliosphere, i.e. the region of the sun's influence. This is thought to extend to about 100 AU from the sun, and the voyagers have long passed that. But that's typically the thought of a planetary scientist, and we all know that they're all dumb. Obviously, the edge of the solar system should be defined by the solar system's gravitational influence, the point where the sun's gravity is no longer strong enough to keep objects in orbit around the sun. That's a no-brainer. So how big exactly is the solar system? Well, the answer is, it seems that no one knows, unless you're a planetary scientist, in which case you think you know, but you're obviously wrong. One day the voyagers will know, and they will never tell us. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.